Hey, I'm Wayne, and this is Let's Start Cooking, the show that's all about food. When I think of food, the biggest thing that I think of is comfort food. And to me, what I remember when I was a young kid, or even today, is mac and cheese. And I'm not talking about the store-bought box mac, and I'm not talking about the, the gloopy mess that you get when you order fast food mac and cheese. I'm talking good, homemade macaroni and cheese. And it's real simple, and it's a quick recipe that... You could do any time with very little equipment. So here's the ingredients. It's real simple. You need a pound of cooked, drained, not rinsed pasta. You're going to need three cups of whole milk, a cup of heavy whipping cream. You're going to need six ounces or six tablespoons of uh, unsalted butter. You're going to need eight ounces of sharp cheddar cheese. And you're going to need six ounces of Gruyere cheese. Now, when you buy your shredded cheese, try to shred it yourself. Don't get the bag cheeses. The bag cheeses have an additive to stop the cheese from clumping. It's fine for some things, but when you try to melt this, it's a real pain in the butt. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make a roux. And it, it's very simple. You're going to take your melt your butter, and we're gonna put this in and we're gonna melt this butter down And once we get the butter melted down, we're going to add our three cups of whole milk and we're gonna add our cup of heavy whipping cream. A lot of times when you do this, you don't have to, people think you have to, for some reason, get this to start to bubble. All you wanna do is melt this butter. Once this butter gets nice and melted, we're gonna add the flour in and we're gonna make a roux. And a roux is basically just a thickening agent that's gonna thicken up our cream sauce. And what we're trying to do is we're gonna make a bechamel sauce. A bechamel, I'm sorry. A bechamel sauce. And bechamel basically means white sauce. It's a, one of the five mother sauces. From this one sauce, you can make many different. You can make a, a cheese sauce, which we're gonna do. You can make... Um, if you've ever had chicken fried steak, that starts with a bechamel. If you've ever had biscuits and gravy, it starts the same way. So we're gonna melt this down. And it doesn't take long. And like I said, you just wanna melt this. You don't wanna start to boil this because if you do, you're gonna end up burning it. And if you burn it, it's gonna give a totally different flavor. And we don't wanna ruin our cheese sauce before we even start. You're gonna find out that this is very easy and the flavor that you're gonna get from this mac and cheese is gonna be something that you've never had before. It's gonna to be totally different from anything you've ever gotten in a restaurant. Because whenever I go to a fast food place and whenever you order their mac and cheese, it always seems to have this gluey, pasty taste consistency. It doesn't taste, you can tell it's artificial. Everything that we're going to do here, you're going to know exactly what's in this. Now that we have this melted down, we're going to take one third a cup of all-purpose flour, and we're going to add this in, and we're going to slowly mix this in, because what we're trying to do now is this is where we get our roux from. This is going to slowly incorporate in, and you want to do it slow because you want to try to get no lumps. Okay? Once you get it... I like to take this off the heat a little bit while I'm doing this, just in case, because you are adding a dry ingredient to your pan, and the last thing you want to do is have it burn to the bottom. Once you mix this up, you're going to get a nice, creamy... Okay. Once this gets nice and creamy and you don't really see any lumps, we're going to take this, and we're going to add our three cups of whole milk. And it doesn't matter. We're going to mix this all in. We're going to incorporate this. And once we get this added in, we're going to mix this up really well. Once we get this added in, we're going to add our one cup of heavy whipping cream. We're going to mix this up now until it starts to thicken. 
This could take five, six, seven minutes, depending on your stove and depending on what you're using. So while I'm stirring this, and while we're waiting for this to thicken, you don't need to sit here and watch me stir this for five to six minutes. So we'll be right back. And as soon as this is done, I'll let you know. All right. It's been about five minutes, six minutes. You want to keep the heat on about medium low. You don't want to burn this. You don't want to scold the milk. And we stir this constantly while it's cooking. And you're going to see it thicken up. It's going to go from the consistency, obviously, of milk to a little bit thicker. It's going to coat. You'll see how it starts to coat the spatula. And you, if you have a spoon, it's going to coat that. Once you get to this point, we're going to add our salt and pepper. And the salt and pepper that you add is going to be to your taste. Everybody has a different taste. I just wouldn't go too high. Because don't forget, you're going to be adding cheeses. But you want to keep this on a medium low. And you now all you want to do is just keep it warm enough because we're going to melt the cheese. And we're going to take this and we're going to add it in little by little. We don't want to go too crazy with it because it's going to lump up until it melts. And you're going to need to be able to stir this. And definitely make sure... Definitely make sure that you have a pot that's big enough to hold everything before you start. All right. We're going to take the cheese a little at a time. And we're going to slowly add the cheese back into our mixture. And all we're trying to do now is just melt everything down into a consistent, nice, creamy cheese sauce. And this is going to take a little bit of time, but you don't want to rush it. You don't want to turn the heat up because, again, you're putting heavier ingredients into this pot. And it's going to want to sink to the bottom until you stir it up and you don't want to burn anything. And it's real simple to scold milk. So we'll get all this mixed in. And we just keep stirring this up until we get all this cheese mixed in. And that's why I said make sure you have a big enough pot because you're going to have a lot of stuff in here by the time we're done. Now the, the pot that you cooked your pasta in, save that pot because we're going to reuse it because the last thing you want to do is have to go to work and work eight, nine, ten hours a day, come home, cook for an hour, hour and a half, and then have to spend another hour and a half cleaning up all your dishes. So that's why I said we're going to try to make recipes that you're going to be able to do this with very minimal equipment and not spend a fortune, not spend a fortune on ingredients. I know some people will tell you, oh, you got to use the best of this, the best of that. We all know that we can't spend a third of our food budget on one meal. And that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to show you that you can make good food with a little bit of equipment and half decent ingredients. All right. Now that we have our cheddar cheese in here, we're gonna mix this up, get a nice consistency. Now the Gruyere cheese it, it has a little bit of a tangy taste to it, which is going to give you that little bit of tangy taste in your cheese, your macaroni and cheese. And what's nice about it is it doesn't have that gloopy, pasty taste consistency that you get in, this, in these fast food restaurants. Now we're going to take this and we're going to add this in. Now this I have not found yet. So you don't have to worry. I haven't found this yet in a pre-shredded bag. So this you're going to have to get and you're going to have to shred this yourself. If you don't have some way of shredding it, whether you have a food processor or a blender, you can just use a knife and just chop it up small enough so it's easier to melt because, again, you want to melt this stuff up pretty quick. You don't want it sitting here too long. You don't want to get it too hot. But we're going to get this all melted up into a nice creamy cheese sauce. And believe it or not, that's about it. 
when it comes to the actual mac and cheese. Now we have a topping we're gonna put on, but this is the cream sauce that you're gonna make for your mac and cheese. And it doesn't take long, it doesn't take a lot of ingredients as you see. It just takes a little bit of patience. Don't rush this because if you rush it, you're gonna end up with lumps and you don't want lumps. Okay, now that we have a nice creamy cheese sauce, we're gonna take this and we're gonna incorporate it with our pasta. And the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna reuse the pot that we cooked it in to make sure we get all this incorporated very nicely. So we'll get everything cleaned up here. Now that we have all this done, we'll get all this cleaned up here and then we'll bring the pasta over, we'll incorporate it. This is about the time you're gonna to wanna to preheat your oven to 350 degrees while we're getting the last of this together. All right, we'll be right back. We're ready to transfer everything over. We have our pot of pasta that we've made. It's already been drained. Again, don't rinse your pasta because the starch that's on that is gonna help this cheese sauce stick to that pasta. Now we, all we're gonna do is transfer the cheese sauce. We're gonna mix it up really well here and then we'll transfer it into our casserole dish. You can use a casserole dish or you can also use individual dishes if you wanna serve this to each person. I'm doing a casserole dish today because we're gonna make this and we're gonna take this to a friend's house. You can do it this way or you can do it in individual dishes. It's up to you. All we're gonna do now is just take this and you can see how nice and creamy that came out. And we're just gonna take this and we're gonna incorporate everything in and be careful. Remember, you are dealing with melted cheese. Oh, that smells good. I will ask my lovely assistant. You got that? All we're gonna do now is just mix this in, incorporate everything together, get this nice. Now this is gonna look, this is gonna look like it's really, really runny, but it will thicken up as it cooks. We're just gonna mix this all together. Get it nice and, nice and incorporated. And this is so easy to do. I mean, you, you could do this in no time. You could do this when you come home. You could even have your pasta pre-made. If you're going to leave your pasta at, for any length of time, I would add a little bit of olive oil, like a third of a teaspoon or maybe even a tablespoon, depending on how much you're making. And that way it keeps the pasta from sticking if you're going to leave it but definitely cover it up, or even better, put it in a Ziploc if you don't have the time. All right, now that we have this completely done, let's move everything over here so you can see what I'm doing. We're going to transfer this into our casserole dish. We're just gonna transfer this over and you can see how creamy it is. There's no lumps, nice and creamy. It's not that hard to do. You'd be surprised and I guarantee you this is going to taste better than anything you've had before. All right, now that we've transferred the pasta into our casserole dish, we're going to take now our one and a half cups of panko, plain panko breadcrumbs or half a cup of Parmesan cheese and our six tablespoons of non-salted butter. We're just gonna mix everything together. What we wanna do is we wanna mix all this up and this is gonna be the topping that we're going to put on our mac and cheese. You can do this with your hands if you want and you can do it any way you want.
You just want to incorporate it as much as you can. You don't want any big lumps. You might not need all of this, but you want to make sure that you cover the top. That's all. All right. Put all this together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to put it across the top. Coat the top. It wasn't that hard of a dish. It doesn't take that long. And your family and friends, believe me, are going to love this. And just in time for our oven. Quick, get all this coated. All right. And like I said, if you don't want to use a casserole dish or you don't have one, you can put this in individual dishes that you can put in the oven. And you can serve it individually. All right. Now that we have all this coated, we're going to stick this in the oven at 350 degrees for 20 minutes. And when that's done, we'll be right back. All right, we're back. It's been... 20 minutes that we've had this in the oven and we've left this cool down for about 10 minutes because it's going to be very hot. So when you take it out, be careful. Just remember, just like when you bite a piece of pizza and the cheese is red hot, well, this is melted cheese. So let's see what we have. Again, it's going to be very hot. See if we can get this out without making a mess. And this is gonna thicken up even more. Look at that cheese. How can you not like macaroni and cheese? All right. Now for the actual test. And again, be careful. exactly what I was hoping for. I'm telling you, this will probably be the best mac and cheese you've ever tasted. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you'll come back next week and watch us again. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe, check us out on Patreon. And I guess I'll see you next week. And all the ingredients will be listed in the description of this video. So until then, let's start cooking.